It's the Marty Sheagold Show at 8.46, and look who is in studio with us, Sean McAuliffe. Oh, Woo! good Hello. morning, Sean. It's me. It's lovely to see you. Yeah. Do you think when they did that song, The Angels, because at the end it's a good place. Do you think that was a call? Like a, they wanted a time check. They knew it was going to be on the radio. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure they did. It's brilliant. I've said it. I've done I it think you're absolutely times. right. Doc yeah. Neeson would have been thinking, I know where this is going to end up. Yeah. <laughs> Top of the hour. <laughs> Top of the hour. <laughs> exactly. Just out of the ad break. <laughs> <clears throat> um, the 13th season of Mad, Mad as Hell premieres this evening. Thank you. Uh, 8.30 on the ABC. Before we talk about that, oh. Um, oh. what a career <laughs> as I just glance over the piece of paper in I'm front of me. surprised you need to look at the piece <laughs> of paper. I really don't. I mean, I'm, I'm so familiar with your career. Well, you, you have been involved in my career. We I certainly have. We started together. We were in a film together, you might yes, remember. Yes, yes. And I was telling the guys earlier that I remember you as a younger comedian at sure. the Star and Garter Hotel in South Melbourne. I did try it a few times, Many, Marty, many years ago. I wasn't very... I mean, I remember... I got up when everybody else got up. You yes. and Bob Franklin yes. and Jim Owen and Glenn yes. Robbins. And I thought, oh, this looks pretty easy. You know, there's but obviously were, the bar is low. I'll you get were, up. And... <laughs> you were hilarious. Were oh. you thinking that you weren't hilarious? I don't think I No, I couldn't do it. I remember making a decision because I used to hang around backstage with you guys and everyone would be, you know, either you and Matt King and every, all, all the comedians at the time. And I thought, I can't, I couldn't possibly do this. Yes. I don't know how you guys do it. No, you were doing it beautifully. Mm-hmm. But I think um, like so many things in life, you find something else and you sort of tend to gravitate away from stand-up. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a, like a, I'm a TV guy. I'm like yes. a sketch comedian. I, yes. I don't think I'm a, I could never do stand-up. I, I, I take my hat off to you. Because you had a whole other career before you became a performer as well. I was a real thing at one point. I had a professional, you know, I was a professional man who worked in the city. Yes. and uh, I was a lawyer. A lawyer with a briefcase. and I did. I had a tie and I had a pinstripe suit. And uh, I actually, at one point, because this was the late 80s, early 90s, I wore a waistcoat. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, wow. How wonderful. Trouble is, I was very poor. Like, I was only like 22. Mm. I didn't have much money. So it was, <clears throat> it was a reversible waistcoat. I had two different colour pairs how of wonderful. pants. Like Humphrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was grey and blue, you oh, know, depending on which way you wore it. That's just th- thrifty and smart. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, the hits keep coming as we go through um, the full frontal um, Welcher and Welcher. I actually did a bit with you on. Did you? Can't yes. remember that. <laughs> it was fairly forgettable. Oh, you were playing a radio guy. <laughs> I fa- remember that. It was fairly forgettable. No, I was a courier. Oh, a courier. Um, oh. Which was a wonderful challenge for me. Don't remember. Um, but then we get on to the more recent stuff and Stairway to Heaven I really thoroughly enjoyed as oh, you sort you. of explored the idea of spirituality, which is such an all-encompassing idea. I know. And you, I, you deal with it obliquely on this show. Yes. Uh, every day. Yes. Uh, but uh, yes, I, I found that fascinating. I, I did enjoy, and I, in fact, I don't know whether we included it in there, but I, it, I did have a Texas preacher who was an end of days minister who wanted to baptize me in the River Jordan. And I said, nah, no, I'm, I'm good. Yes. And I should Do have you done regret it. It would, that? it would have looked great. Yeah, it would have been good TV. It would have liked been when John Saffron got, you know, possessed and he was yes. exercised. That but I uh, I just I was Did just you scared. grow up with any kind of faith? Uh well I had I grew up in a Catholic household, yeah. so you kind of just inherit that without even thinking about it. I suppose mm. most people do that with religion anyway. And then mm. later on they think Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, what? 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 Really? Is he sitting in the clouds or standing? Is that, how does this work? <laughs> yeah. So that was that. And I, th- I thought, oh, well, I'll get the ABC, to, oh, the SBS, in fact, to pay for my trip to these various places and, yes. uh, and test and test out whether there was any God. And more recently on The Source um, was a very interesting delve oh, into. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I don't drink. So I, didn't dr- I don't drink. And no. I haven't for many years. And I, I, I was a little bit concerned because my boys, my children were growing up and I had no advice for them. So mm. again, I just got ABC to pay for the bills and <laughs> said, kids, watch this. That was an eye-opener for you, though, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, it was. And I hadn't had any alcohol for, well, 35 years. Mm. And uh, part of it was to see how my brain would work with an MRI and everything. So I did I did actually drink in mm. one of the episodes mm. to the point. They said, drink so much that you're going to get a hangover. Uh, and I was about 0.06, which is not a lot. No, and but it's still drunk. <laughs> I, was, I was drunk, but the doctor said, I think he's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> and how was the hangover? Uh, well, I didn't have one because you need to get to 0.08. Oh, do you? Apparently in order is to get a, a hangover. Fact? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and so I didn't have a hangover. In fact, the test, it, it didn't really help the doco because all the tests I did, I did much better after a few <laughs> drinks and the next day. <laughs> Matt as Hell returns tonight at 8.30pm on ABC TV and ABC
iView. And Sean joins us at the moment. Hello, sorry. It is 8.32 it starts. I don't want you tuning in and seeing the end of Tom Gleeson's show. <laughs> Fair enough. 8.32. Fair enough. 32. My apologies. Um, 8.32, there I mean, you it's go. It's the best bit. <laughs> yeah, of it's course. such a lovely um, group of people that you work with on this show. Oh, yeah. Um, we know mutually a lot of them. El- El- Emily Tahini is one of the loveliest and most talented women, I think, in the country. She's great. She's uh, And she plays so many characters and she disappears so completely that mm. I th- People watch the show and just assume there's a cast of 10, you know, mm. easily 10. I know. Yeah. She's a wonderful, wonderful performer. Francis Greenslade and yeah, you have worked so together. Yes. How long do you reckon? Uh, well, I met him at university, so we, I don't, if that's working. And we, <laughs> so we did, we did footlight shows and things like that Unbelievable. together. So we, I met him when he was 18, 19 years old. What a, what a working and no doubt friendship the two of you have. It would just be shorthand now, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we know what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's like a trapeze act. He's, he's going to catch me if he sees that I'm wobbly and me with him. So, you know, and if we fall together and it's funny as well. So yeah. you, you can't lose. And, hey, a, and independently wonderful careers as well. And Stephen Hall, our old friend Stephen, Brilliant. Done wonderful stuff. Tosh Greenslade, they're all there. What can we expect? I mean, I know, I feel like we know what we can expect. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can expect, uh, you can expect to be um, surprised. Um, no, you can't. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's after ten years, you know, no. you, you can trust it. It's like you know, you can go to the bank, you can put it in the uh, bank. Absolutely, this you is can. absolutely dependable. And it's uh, it's thirteen seasons, and that's like one off uh, the t- mash. You know, it's, it's Alan Alderish. Yeah, you, you have to watch it. You know, you, you. And are you still enjoying it as much as you always have? I yeah, I do. This is this is I, Gary McCaffrey, uh, who you know, yes. who's a co-writer and the co-creator of the show. He said this is the show we've always you know we've been moving towards, and very few comedy shows are, are built out from the writers' room. Mm. And you you know you were on Fisk recently, and you know the importance of the writing, and you mm. know that if the show is built out, as Kitty kind of co-directed and looked after everything. It just feels less secondhand. It yes. feels, it, you know, you own the material a lot more. And are the cast writing as well? No, they don't. They, no, but they certainly bring to, like, say, Ros Hammond was in the show and she would invest in some of the characters and then we think, oh, great, we'll write for that character. Yes, so, so, yes. So, the, so it branches out from there. It does, yeah. And Gary and yourself have just been, I mean, you that you must have worked with Gary for. Well, the same amount of time. The same in amount fact, of time. earlier because we went to the same school together. Uh, you know, so we've known each other for, you know, way too long. Oh, my God. But he doesn't live here anymore. He writes. He's in Tasmania. Is he? He, he just emails. Oh, does he? <laughs> I'm not even sure it's him. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I'm being scammed. The last two seasons, I think the stuff's been It could been be Ros Hammond. It's a, or a Nigerian prince. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give him any money. Uh, lovely to see you, Sean. Best of luck with this evening. Thanks a lot. Uh, can, I hear, can I hear Lauren's uh, uh, New York accent? Oh, of course oh. you can. Oh, yeah. I just want to hear that. because it's Sean, Sean, I only do it for special occasions. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. That's great. It sounds like another person. It really <laughs> does. It's Cindy Lopez. <laughs> the Mighty Sheargold Show. Triple M.